like we all saw Drake's demise and we saw Drake's burial. The show was the repass. This was all us back in the church basement eating fried chicken and macaroni and cheese and making jokes at Drake's expense. It was like you making you you having fun with your favorite cousins. It was that kind of moment. I'm telling you, dog. This will be talked about forever and always in LA. Samaria, it was a slow week for sports, but a good week for an ass kicking. My voice is a little bit gone because I was at the Ken and Friends pop out concert. You feel me? We gonna get into all that, but I gotta ask you, how are you feeling today, beloved? I'm feeling good. I'm trying to figure out how are you alive, sir? What do you mean? Cause I'm you don't survivor. even have a voice. I'm a survivor. <laughs> you see the army fatigues on me? It's right here. I'm a survivor. I'm a soldier. You feel me? Let's get into the fumble. It's that time. Let's go. So the Detroit Pistons have fired Monty Williams after just one season as the head coach. According to sources at ESPN, the decision came from ownership. I mean, they are the ones who will have to pay Williams the remaining $65 million left on his contract. The Pistons, who are the third youngest team in the NBA, finished with just 14 wins last season. Rodney, did the Pistons front office pull the trigger too quick? Or was it time to let go of Monty? Listen, I can't call it whether or not they pulled the trigger too quick. What I will say is it is absolutely crazy to fire a black man on Juneteenth. <laughs> that is <laughs> oh so wild, bro. Like just not reading the room at all. Now, granted, he does get the lead with $65 million still owed to him. But I was floored when I woke up on Juneteenth and seen this black man was no longer employed. I think Monty is a great human being. I don't know how great of a coach he is. He's been through a lot of personal tragedies, and I think there's some more that you'll be speaking to in just a moment. Um, I, I hate that this happened to him, but on, on the real tip, he should feel happy because he is free. That front office is inadequate. The Pistons have been terrible for far too long. So on this Juneteenth, he has been granted his emancipation papers from, <laughs> from, from the nastiness that is the Detroit Pistons. Yeah, I was going to say that this is like a circus in this Pistons front office because for you to announce that you're going to fire him, and this was from the top, from ownership, when your president of basketball operations was under the impression that he had a little control. So we all can see the power dynamic now in your organization, and we see that you're, the, the new president of basketball operations has no type of control because he was also blindsided. And I think this will affect the way that they move moving forward. Yeah. yeah. I, you know, the other places that Monty has been relieved of his duties from, right, Phoenix, and he was in New Orleans. I can't remember if he got fired from New Orleans or uh, if he just was never given the full-time head coaching position. But um, Phoenix did not get better after Monty Williams left last year. Actually, they uh, underwhelmed uh, in the season after his termination. And the Detroit Pistons had such a low ceiling to begin with. I don't really understand like what, they, what more they expected from him. I think there are two things. If I I had to put my finger on something uh, that may be attributed to ownership wanting to look further into replacing him. Uh, and that was the 28 game uh, losing streak, right? Like that was, that's a, that's the longest losing streak in NBA history, losing 28 games in a row. And also his handling of Jaden Ivey, who is a young up and coming player who Monty Williams didn't put in the rotation early on. And I, I feel like Jaden Ivey has a lot of talent. They, they drafted him extremely high. And so they have expectations for him and it doesn't feel like Monty was bringing him along uh, quickly enough for ownership so um you know but this this does feel this this feels inconsiderate this feels stupid um I, I just I don't necessarily get it but you know who knows I know because I'm just thinking like at what point do you give a guy an opportunity I, I put in there the third youngest team for a reason I mean yeah. he's not dealing with veterans like he was when he was in Phoenix so you I feel like you have to give a guy at least two seasons that's just me personally if yeah. I'm a black coach I'm not going to the NBA I'm, I mean I mean at least you can do so, one year and get 65 million dollars if I'm Monty yeah. I'm just, I would take a, a year off to kind of because his current wife is battling breast cancer. I'm not sure if she's in remission or not. So he just has so much stuff going on. And I and I can see how basketball could be a way for him to kind of get away from all of the stress that maybe he's going through in his personal life. But I do feel like take your 65 meal and, and kind of take some time off. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, I got family out there, but, um, you know, if you got other options to live besides Detroit, you know, right? <laughs> 
It ain't the worst situation. You know what I'm okay, saying? Okay. Before I let you go, though. <laughs> what up? LA has an opening. No. No. Okay. No. This is not a, I don't think this is a town for Monty. Um, but also just in, in talking about who should take the Detroit Pistons uh, job, I think that Sam Cassell, um, it's about time that he gets a chance to, to sit in that first chair. Uh, so hopefully somebody does right by Sam Cassell in the immediate future. It makes him a head coach in the NBA, well-deserving and a good, good brother, like understands guards. Um, is kind of a guard whisperer was that for John Wall and Bradley Bill, Gilbert Arenas, um, Jalen Brown, and so on and so forth. So hopefully he'll get a crack at this opportunity. Do you feel like he should go to a place like the Detroit Pistons who aren't giving guys a chance? I never want to see anybody go to the Detroit Pistons. Um, <laughs> I'm just being honest. I'm, I've never been a Pistons fan. Maybe it's because I grew up a Michael Jordan fan, but like, you know, they're not as bad as Boston to me, but there's something about Detroit that just never really... The Pistons, not the city. I don't want no problems. But, you know, I just I never really rocked with, with the Detroit Pistons. But y'all let us know y'all thoughts. Do you feel like Monty Williams was relieved of his duties far too soon out in Detroit? Hey, Samarius. So, you know, that sports is all about asserting your dominance while outsmarting and outlasting your opponent. Hip hop, where I come from, is sport. So we have to talk about the Ken and Friends concert that took place in L.A. that I had the privilege to be at. Um, it had athletes. If you want to talk sports, OK, we had the Marjorie Rose. We had Russell Westbrook on stage walking it out. It was real L.A. culture. Did you see the Ken and Friends show live from the forum, Samarius? No, I didn't watch it. I did watch the playback on the shade room, but um, the I saw that room. Was, I know I saw that everybody was there. I feel like that was one of those like core memory moments for all of you. <laughs> I want to know all the details, Rodney. Where were you sitting? Did you see LeBron? Like, I need to know all the details. Did you see they not like us five times in a row? Every word. Did you? It was it was it was six times because one more time oh, on the way out. Yeah, I had a really good seat. I had a really good seat. I you know I kind of win Dad of the Year award because I had my 16 year old son with me, and Kendrick is like his favorite artist of all time. So that was super fly. I let him. He was cursing up a storm. Um, <laughs> Yo, there is a Kendrick is such a tactician, right? And the way that he approaches. Not just music, but the execution of the show around music is very is very like Kobe like. He has like a drill down focus when he's when he's on stage, right? And, and he knows that camera is is punching in on him. Like he does this beady eye thing that is really reminiscent of what Kobe Bryant used to do in, in clutching critical moments. The way that this man galvanized the city of, of Los Angeles, forget actually, the way he galvanized the entire West Coast um, is something that no one has ever, ever been able to do to this degree. The man had gangs from 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 Compton to Long Beach to Watts to Compton, like, like everywhere, all on the stage at the same time in Los Angeles, which I'm not from here, but I've been here long enough to have an understanding, a thorough understanding of the culture that exists here. Man, Kendrick pulled something off yesterday that, that government officials have been trying to do for 50 and 60 years in this city. Um, his, he's, he's such a leader. He is such a, a unifying force, man. And I'm so happy that this is the man that sits atop the throne of hip hop right now because he actually cares. There's something to be said about that. Yeah, and I mean, even the production of it from my end, because I wasn't there, but the production was was really, I felt like tasteful and enjoyable. So, yo, you had Dr. Okay. Dre come out, like, like there was okay. like literally, literally everybody in LA from from young to old was was there. <laughs> Anybody who made an impact, Dr. Dre kicking off, they not like us was it sent the yeah. whole arena into a frenzy right like you know because really i think a lot of times the, the older generation kind of like they, they keep their hands clean when it comes to certain things drake is a huge artist right and so a lot you know, a lot of people don't necessarily want to get um on on the bad side of him traditionally so to see dre you know uh uh, uh I guess is, is he Mount Rushmore? He's definitely Mount Rushmore producers, um, but a Mount Rushmore artist come out and actually like kind of let people know where he stood with things. I thought that was like, man, that was the ultimate nail in the coffin. We, you know, yesterday or or the con the concert was yesterday. This will come out on Friday, but this show was like, like we all saw Drake's demise and we saw Drake's burial. The show was the the show was the repass. This was all us back in the church basement eating fried chicken and macaroni and cheese and making jokes at Drake's expense. 
And it was like you making you you having fun with your favorite cousins. It was that kind of moment. I'm telling you, dog. This will be talked about forever and always in LA. Like a critical cultural moment for LA and the hip hop as a whole. Yeah, and I'm I'm a big Drake fan, but I can say that. Yeah, he, he, yeah, he, he got dismembered. Yeah, you had yeah, yeah Bron in the building too, right? Yeah, so yeah. we saw we saw Bron singing along to "They Not Like Us," and we all know that Bron has been a Drake guy. So that's that says something. James Harden in the building. Yeah, hey man, I don't know what Drake does socially. I don't know how he's going to be able to move in this city going forward because there are people who have drawn lines in the sand, and it'll change the way he's able to socially, not professionally, but socially move in this city so i wish you could have been here samaria memphis uh memphis don't got nothing like this you I, I got glorilla though right or nashville. i don't live in memphis anymore oh uh, i live boy. in nashville and we, we don't, don't got nobody, nobody. <laughs> you got the honky talk man i'm it's another well, I'm from atlanta so i rep atlanta like yeah free thug and we got everybody Free thug. Hey, let us know y'all thoughts did you check out the ken and friends show out here in la and if you did what were your thoughts so the NBA draft is now one week away. We know the Atlanta Hawks have the number one overall pick and Bronny James could hear his name called. Bronny has worked out with just two teams, the Suns and the Lakers, but several teams are saying they had a hard time securing workouts with him. His agent, Rich Paul, says that that was by design. Star agent says that it's all about getting the perfect fit, but is he limiting his client, Bronny? Yes, and he should. I have... Like I said in the, many times, I've worked in the NBA for five years. I got a hell of friends that play in the league. Where you are drafted will dictate your career a lot of times in the NBA. Um, the windows for opportunity are so small that if you're drafted into a situation that is not nurturing to you, to what you bring to the table, um, it can be it can be critical and it could be to the detriment of the entirety of your career. Um, you know, like it was always said that the San Antonio Spurs, uh, their player development was far beyond any other team in the entire NBA. So if you got drafted to the Spurs, you had a chance to be a pro for 10, 15 years. Whereas if you got drafted to, let's say, the Washington Wizards, the organization that I worked for for many years, um, which is very unserious, right? Then you picked up bad habits along the way because their front office uh, was just jokes. And then the veterans and leadership in the locker room, <clears throat> excuse me, in the locker room were also jokes. And so, you know, like, it, this is this is very critical for Bronny James to be a part of an organization that understands what player development even is. So do you feel like the Suns and the Lakers are two teams that understand that? Yeah, I, I think especially the Phoenix Suns um, and, and actually and the Los Angeles Lakers. Like if we take a look at the draft history of the Los Angeles Lakers, a lot of their a lot of their draft picks pan out very well. You got Julius Randle, you got Josh Hart, you got well, Alonzo's always hurt. Yeah, um, they, got, they pan out well other places. It, but but that's what I'm saying. But where they were drafted allowed them some level of professionalism, right? If you live in LA, okay. if you're drafted to be a Laker, like you are being nurtured under a spotlight that is unlike any other in the entire NBA. And so you have to come with your, you have to come ready to play. Even if you're not successful on the court, as far as winning is concerned, you have to show people that you are working hard because this is Kobe Bryant city. So you can't get by just being the dude popping up and poppy and having a good time. And you ain't putting no work in the gym because they will clown you out here straight like that. I've only covered the NBA closely for two years when I was in Memphis covering the Grizzlies. Mm. But I will say for me personally, I'm not an agent, but I do feel like it's limiting a little bit because I think that if LeBron, if LeBron James Jr. can get out in front of these teams and work out, I mean, or just talk to them. Like, I think that just allowing him to just be in the space, talking to front office, talking to coaches, then he can really see who's a fit and who's not. You're already coming in basically saying the Suns or the Lakers are the only two teams that are going to draft Bronny. And I feel like that's just limiting him because those are those teams only have three picks next week. And I yeah, don't know but, if one of them is going to go to Bronny. Hey, man, we saw this with Eli Manning, right? It's just like sometimes <laughs> when you got certain DNA, you get to dictate certain things. I'm never going to be mad at somebody using nepotism to put their children in position to be successful in life. I'm I'm, I'm just not going to do that because I'm a father and I know what it takes for, for me to be where I'm at. You know, if I can open the door for my son to be in a place that'll make sure that he's successful or, or gives him a better chance at being successful down the line, then I'm always going to choose that option. Rich Paul is brilliant. 
right? Mm-hmm. Like he is some, he, he plays chess out here with these people. And so, you know, if he's identified places that Browning needs to be in order for Browning to be successful, then he's going to do that while also keeping him close in proximity to his family and the empire that LeBron James is, is, is structuring out here in LA, then I, I can't be mad at it. Rich has been in the business for a long time. So he kind of mm-hmm. knows the inner workings of a lot of these organizations. But I feel like can Bronny get an opportunity to say like, okay, I want to go and meet with the Grizzlies and see what the like you know or the hey. Hawks or somebody. I mean, Samari, I when, on on your on your dating app of choice, you be swiping right on everybody. I don't be on dating apps; they scare me. When when you out in the streets, right, and somebody walk up to you, you give everybody your number. No, but at least I look at them. Like I can look and make the decision. Like they got like Bronny. No, no, no. You look, you look from afar, and even so, before they even have a chance to walk up to you and ask you for the number, you've already assessed that's not the one for me. That's how I do it anyway, or, or used to do it back in my day. Oh yeah, cleared up, cleared up. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> wrap it up, wrap this segment up, Samaria. Come on, let's go. <laughs> Y'all, let us know down in the comments. Do you feel like Bronny James should have actually worked out with some of these teams, or do you feel like Rich Paul is just the great agent that he is? So, Samaria, the fumble of the week this week, it it hurts me. It hurts me. I mean, we all know I'm from New Jersey, right? I rep it well. Um, this gentleman is someone who I have referred to as the best, best, not greatest, because greatest implies, you know, a level of accolade, um, but the best basketball player to ever touch the floor in the NBA under 6'2". Uh, when he was growing up, because he's from like the next town over. I used to go to the park and we would watch him play or we would be playing on the court with him or I coached some of his some of his closest friends. Um, but but Kyrie Irving, I, I got to talk to you this week and I got to give you the fumble of the week, beloved. Now listen, you know it's fam. It's family because Jersey sticks together. But Kyrie was absolutely unrecognizable in all three games in Boston during the NBA Finals. He was someone who uh, seemed to have lost all confidence and had been greatly affected by the ferocity in which the Boston faithful uh, was cursing up at his name and on his likeness. Um, But Kyrie, I thought, had an opportunity to to avenge to avenge the ancestors, man. You know, like we've all heard stories about what Boston has been for athletes, not just visiting athletes, but also those black athletes who played on Boston teams, right? There's a story out there about feces being put into the bed of one Bill Russell. And so Kyrie had a chance, you know, to really avenge the, um, the disgusting, vile nature of, of Boston Celtics fans. And I I used to coach high school AAU basketball. I lived in the South for six years. To me, Boston is the Alabama of the North. The racism is tangible in that city. And if for someone as as proud of their blackness and their indigenous roots as Kyrie Irving is, um, I just thought that he was gonna uh, bring forth a level of super Saiyan uh, indigenous warrior that had never been seen before in the NBA. And it just didn't go quite like that. He was abysmal in all three games. And so I have to give him the fumble of the week, even though I love him very, very much. Uh, Samaria, uh, do you feel like Kyrie Irving let down Luka Doncic in the 2024 NBA Finals? Uh, Not abysmal, but yes. And I have to eat my words because I said that he was going to go to Boston and he was going to hear some of this stuff. And then it was going to awaken this this player that we had never seen before because he is yeah. so much stronger mentally and physically. He's his best self right now. And he really let us down. He let all of that get to him. And I just, oh, God, yeah, it was really bad. He yeah. did bow out gracefully, though. Um, he, he, he allowed everybody to go off the, the floor before him. Um, and he stayed on the court. And I mean, it's so crazy when you see the video because you have Boston fans not even cheering the confetti's coming down. They're not even cheering for the Celtics. You all just got your 18th championship. Y'all are heckling Kyrie as he's yeah. getting he's walking off the floor. So I think a lot of us felt like he was going to to step up in a way that we hadn't seen before. But it just wasn't, I guess, the time. Yeah, and that, that goes to just 
uh, speak to the polarization of Kyrie Irving. Like he is someone that people feel strongly about one way or another. Um, he'll take this opportunity to grow, not even as a basketball player, because it's clear that his mission on earth as he sees it is so much more important than basketball. As a man, he will learn from this. And uh, I guess we'll be, go we'll be better going forward in, in handling and dealing with the vitriol that may come his way as he embarks on opportunities that exist outside of basketball. I can definitely see him wanting to be more uh, in a political landscape. And so if that's the case, right, like you'll never you'll never hear it worse than you did up in Boston playing against the Boston Celtics in the NBA finals. Um, and so this is just another notch in the belt um, in his personal growth and development as just a phenomenal human being, always and forever a Kyrie Irving fan. But we got to acknowledge, uh, you know, when he underwhelms. Yeah, so y'all let us know your thoughts. Is the fumble of the week for Kyrie Irving deserving or should I have given him a pass because he's from Jersey like I am? All right, so that's all for this week. Thank you for joining us for another episode of The Fumble. Make sure to subscribe to The Fumble and at The Fumble Sports on our social media platforms. We deliver the latest in sports every day on our YouTube page with Jackie Ray and every Friday right here at The Fumble with myself, Samari Terry, and Rodney Rakai. Before we go... Rest in peace to another legend that we lost, Willie Mays. Ugh. Yeah, the, the Say Hey Kid, Say Hey Kid. Also, rest in peace to Jerry West as well, the logo. Yes. Um, yeah, yes. a lot of legends, a lot of legends leaving Earth, and we appreciate all their contributions. So rest in peace to both gentlemen. We out of here, baby. Yeah.